Hey CNC peeps, it's Liberty here. I know I'm not the face you're used to seeing, um, normally in the back with the packaging and all that, um, but as you guys might have seen, I've been doing some name carves um, and with a V-carve bit. Uh, and today I'm ready to step up the game and Garrett gave me the machine. So I'm a little bit nervous, but we're going for it. IDCwoodcraft.com so today's project is going to be a little tic-tac-toe board. I have a scrap piece of wood that I've uh, commandeered from Garrett and I wanted something simple but with like big changes and different bits that I haven't used before um, to dip our toes into the water. So I made up this file, very simple. Hopefully we will be putting resin in it as well, resin epoxy. Uh, Julianne and I are going to play around with that. So I made the pockets a little bit deeper. Now, I've only been seeing seeing for about three months now. My experience is very low, like I said, name carves, V carving, that's it. Um, but I want to take you guys along with this to kind of encourage beginners on where you're at, where you're gonna be, and that you don't have to start out with things super crazy, you don't have to move super fast, and you can make something really cool for you, for your family, for a gift, build on your experience without doing something crazy like a 3D image carve or what have you. Yes, we'll eventually get there, but I got to start somewhere and hopefully you'll start here with me too. I'm a little nervous, but I've got my checklist in hands. We're going to run through the last couple things I need to check and just jump into it. And if you're a beginner like me, you can get this checklist just like mine in the description. I've laminated mine. You don't have to do that. It's going to run you through all the steps you need to make sure your project goes right the first time. So let's see how it works. Okay, I've got everything checked off on my checklist. I did put minor marks on some of these things because first I'm gonna do a test run because I am really nervous. I don't wanna put the bit in just yet. I wanna make sure all of my planning has gone accordingly. Once we do that test run, I'll finish the check marks and w we will get going. I just don't wanna ruin this piece of wood. We've got the project loaded up. G code is in G sender. My hand's gonna be on the stop button and we're gonna hope for the best. Test number one. The test went surprisingly well. This carve is gonna be a total of four different G codes. We've got the first one loaded up. We're starting with the pockets of the X's and O's. Um, and we are using a down cut end mill one quarter inch with a one quarter inch shank. The second carve is going to be the down cut end mill one eighth inch and that's for cleaning up the pockets. And then we will move on to the outer little fancy edge I made with a one eighth inch round over bit um, and it'll just create like a cute little edge like i said it's just for decoration today to hold down our project i'm going to be using x fasten woodworking tape i need that to free me up of clamps when i'm doing the outer edge and i know with this it's going to be held down tight other hold down methods we will be using today is a toe clamp which i'll have a link in the description below to where you can get yours this is the toe clamp I'm gonna be using today to hold down the project. This is my current favorite hold down method. Uh, it allows me to quick change a lot when I'm doing the name signs um, with just a drill. As I said, for our first carve today, we're gonna to be using a one quarter inch down cut and mill from IDC Woodcraft. You can get that on our website and I'll know if you order because I handle all the packages. We're gonna be following the rule of thirds. This is the chucking guide from IDC Woodcraft. And you can see we have little diagrams of the thirds that I will be following. Um, and there's different guidance on your different types of bits here. I do send these out as a sticker with every IDC Woodcraft first time purchase, as well as our bits that we sometimes have an issue with. I'll throw this in here. You can get yours in the link below and print it out and laminate it just like mine. Um, and if you've ordered from us before and want one, just send us an email and I'll get you one in your next order. Yay, I went the right direction. When I did the test run, I kind of did a guessing on the X and Y with my finger and put the Z way up. That way it wouldn't run into the material or anything. I could just see how it ran without any hiccups. So now we have to reset the X, Y, and Z to our bit. I just look down the line, make sure that's centered, and then for the Z, I'm gonna use the good old paper method. We're gonna check and make sure that the X and Y zero took so X, Y, zero, and everything looks good. Uh, I'm gonna inch myself down to the Z, make sure it looks good, and it looks beautiful. I've gone back through and done my for sure checks 
for this carve. We've got the router bit in, X, Y, Z, zeros all set. I'm gonna have my hand on the big button this time and hope for the best and hope I don't puke. I'm so scared. I just have to hit start, but I'm so scared. Okay, one, two, do it. was a bad idea, but I cannot believe how well that went. That went so well. Oh my gosh. I am so scared for the next step still, but I did that. I did that. <laughs> Let's take a look. We're going to be using IDC Woodcraft calipers to do the measurement. See where we're at. And we're at just under a quarter of an inch. So that last bit should be done with our one eighth inch down cut. Oh my gosh. These look so good. And they haven't even been cleaned up with the one eighth bit yet. I am so proud of how these turned out. So much better than I thought. This is the IDC Woodcraft one eighth inch down cut end mill. We're gonna be using this to pass back through and clean up those squares. Since we're changing out our bit, we're gonna need to step back on our checklist and go through again, resetting our zero, cleaning the collet. Since I'm switching to a 1 8 bit, I'm gonna be using this collet. It's a 1 8 inch precision collet from one quarter inch. It is also on our website, which I will have a link in the description below. Gone through the checklist, Z0 is set, new bit is in. We've got the G code loaded and we are ready to cut. Let's hope this one goes as well as the last one did. We just finished the 1 8 down cut cleanup profile of the pocket. Uh, the purposes of that is because when your quarter inch bit is initially going into the pocket, it is pulled by a lot more wood. It's got a lot more pressure going against it with the wood because it's cutting with the full bit. Whereas once you go on to your next steps, you're cutting with whether it be 50% or 40%, whatever you pick as your step over. And it has a lot less wood pulling against it, pushing it up. So that final cleanup edge is to even out that bottom where it was pulling on it when it had more wood pressure. Next, we're gonna be switching out the bit for the 1 8 inch roundover bit. Ah! We carry this on IDC Woodcraft as well. And there's lots of different uses for it. Today, we're gonna add just a little pretty groove around the edge here. the really scary part. Before the carving, it's new, uh, it's different bits, um, but there's a lot of general concept that I can follow along to have a little bit of bravery, which I've not had, but now we've gotta take these clamps off to do the outer edge. So, here goes nothing. Now that we've removed the clamps, it is being solely held down by X Fasten woodworking tape. Uh, I'm putting a lot of trust into this. I've seen it work very well for Garrett. It comes highly recommended. Uh, hopefully I've learned well from him and it works just as well for me. Let's get started. I'm changing into the one quarter inch roundover bit. It is a forming tool. Um, it's just like the previous one, but it is twice as big. It has a quarter inch radius curve here. Um, and that's what we're gonna use to style up these edges. So this is where job dimensions come uh, slapping you in the face, I guess. Uh, even with my checklist and double checking things, I did not triple check things, I guess. And I have a little bit of an edge left here uh, that was not supposed to be there. So, guess we gotta fix that. So 
in discovering that my measurements were a little bit off on this project, I'm gonna try and fix it by using a quarter inch down cut end mill to profile it down to the machine bed. I'm gonna use the touch probe to zero it out and see how it goes. Yes! I've never gotten that to work right. All right, we are done with our tool pass and this tape has obviously worked its magic. It is time to take it off. Well, there we go. Obviously it's not finished. She needs cleaned up quite a bit. And as I said, we will be epoxying our little X's and O's spots here. And that's all of it for now. Julianne and I, as I said, are gonna be epoxying it. Um, to make it all nice and pretty, uh, but for now, the carving is done. I was absolutely terrified going into this and I am very proud of how it came out. I'm very happy that Garrett's teaching has carried me all the way through my very first official carve. Like, comment, and subscribe, and everything that I've used in this video, as always, is down below in the description. See you later, CNC peeps. IDCwoodcraft.com.